In a previous video, I explained about while loops. Those are loops, bits of code, that carry on looping around, executing time after time, for a certain number of times which might not be known in advance. You might, for example, be reading data from a file and you don't know how much data there is. You say, while there is more data, do this. But sometimes you know exactly how much data you have to handle. In that case, you can use a for loop. For example, if you've got a fixed size array with 10 items in, array index 0 to array index 9, you might want to print each item. So you'd write a for loop that counts from 0 up to 9. You'd increment the counter at each turn through the loop. So it would go into the array getting 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc, etc, until you come to the end of the array, printing each item. So a for loop is great for iterating over, for counting through a fixed number of items when you know the number of items in advance. The actual syntax for a for loop varies quite a bit from language to language. Here you can see an example in Object Pascal, this is in Delphi, and the for loop syntax here is really quite simple. It starts off with this variable i, which is an integer, which is going to be used to count through the loop. So what this says is for i equals 0, that means i starts with a value of 0, up until i equals 9, do this code. And each time through this loop, the value of i is incremented by 1. So it counts from 0 to 9, and at each turn through that loop, this code is executed. The end result is just to put the value of i into a memo. This is the program, and those are the results. Let's look at another example using a C-like syntax. Now, this syntax is used in many languages, in C, C++, ActionScript, Java, and so on. This, in fact, is in C Sharp. The for loop syntax is a bit more complicated. It's widely used in all those languages, though, so it's worth knowing. This takes three parts. So initially, we have the initial value of the counter variable set in this part. It says i equals 0. The next part is the end condition. So what this says is execute this code while this condition is met, while i is less than 10. And the final section increments the value of i at each turn. So I've just used i++ plus plus to add 1 to i. Um, as I said, it looks a bit more complicated than the Pascal example, but when I run it, the end results are exactly the same. Just prints out the value of i into this box here. So those are two simple examples of using for loops in Pascal and a C-like language such as C-sharp. Keep up to date with all the tutorials on programming by going to our website at www.bitwisecourses.com.